Hello friends. So, um, I am going to be filming today a um, tutorial on how to make this cute little clock kit. This is an ideology assemblage clock from Tim Holtz. So it's really cute. It's about, I don't know, I want to say that's like six inches, but maybe like four inches, maybe six by four, maybe five by seven. Um, but it's be so cute. I thought it would be so cute filled with so many different things. I'm going to do like a spring Valentine's Day thing inside of this because I think that'll just be cutest. And I've kind of gathered, like I just have it in my mind, Grant, granted, um, you know me, I just kind of like gather stuff and then whatever happens, happens. I kind of have this idea to put this little tree in it. This is a Tim Holtz ideology his trees. All of this stuff, by the way, I grabbed from our Scarlet Lime store, our warehouse. So if you're interested or wondering, and some of the stuff I know, if you're watching the um, this video the, the week that it goes live, is on sale this week, 40% um, off. The clock is not, but some of the other stuff that I grabbed I knew was, so I thought it would be great to use them because then um, if you wanted to buy them, you could get them for that price. So I've gathered a few things. Um, paper, Paper pads, um, these were actually in the kits, I believe, our mixed media kits for December. I haven't decided I'm gonna use these, but I think the little, um, the little, what do you call that? Rainbow is really cute, and these raindrops are cute. I grabbed these little words from um, Maya Road, just cause, I don't know, I, I was thinking it might be cute there, I'm not sure. I also grabbed these stickers, though. Um, cause the stickers might be cute as well. And these are just the Tim Holtz Ideology stickers. Um, again, we sell these in the store. And we are always, in our kits that we do, I always like to include, not in every kit, but these little stickers, the alphabet stickers, because um, they're so great for using on canvas to create like custom sayings or whatever, and they just look cute. So we, I think I'm gonna be using those. And then we have these hearts, these plain chipboard hearts by Jenny Bone. And I have this idea to kind of do a flag that comes over to the tree. And so that's why I grabbed some of our, um, we carry floss in the store and twine in the store. Um, I grabbed it because I'm gonna need something to string it across. And then, um, I don't know, these were kind of cute too. Those might be cute to come across. So the first thing I'm gonna do, oh, and I grabbed paint, of course, and modeling paste. Um, and I'll show you for on these cute little cabochons. You never know, you might use them. But the first thing is this just comes right out like that, super easy. Um, and then obviously this stands up. You can either just do something to the back of this and stick it in here and it'd be so cute 3D. You can also put stuff inside of here and that's what I'm going to do. Um, I have never worked with one of these before, so you know, I, we might run into problems during it. I'm, gonna, I, I'm hoping paint sticks to the inside of here. If it doesn't, we'll just use tissue paper. Um, but I also was thinking it would be so cute, and I'm not going to do it this time, but to have like a heart like with wings on the back of it and it just showing through the clock, wouldn't that be so cute? And obviously you'd decorate the back of it and stuff, but these are just made out of paper clay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to get started is um, I'm going to paint the inside of this. And my idea is I'm going to put modeling paste down on the bottom of this. Um, to kind of make it look like grass because I want the tree sitting on the grass and it's I don't want snow so I'm gonna do it since modeling paste white I'm gonna tint it blue um, and then we're gonna also decoupage, decoupage the back of this so maybe let's start with this first because that's gonna be the easiest thing let me grab my paper pad and I'm just this is a dear Lizzie lucky charm paper pad this is also something we carry in the store and this it will also be 40% off and I will link, um, obviously this is only good during this week, and I'll link the week that it's good for, the, and I will also link the 40% off coupon code that you can use in the store, and mention the products that the 40% off is on, because we just went to CHA, and we have a ton of new products coming in, so we need to make room for new, I hate these little stickers they put on the sides, seriously. I mean, I guess they're nice, but look, now I just destroyed my cover. So I want a blue and a green, basically. I'm not sure if this had a, I just grabbed one paper pad, that's so cute. There's a green, but that's not really a blue blue. This might be a better blue. And that might be a better green. Uh, we'll see. 
I can use paint too. All of these are so cute. I love these. Oh, this is such a cute paper pad. Okay, so what I'm going to do is basically just create a scene. I'm going to do grass down here. So I'm just going to cut up some pieces of green grass. And actually, I think I don't want them ripped. I think I'm just going to. And you could just do one piece all the way across. Or you could do two pieces, whatever. I'm just going to keep it simple because I'm, there's going to be so much going on. I kind of want to keep the background somewhat simple. So I think that's going to be my best bet. And I'm going to take some. This is just decoupage. Probably way more than I needed. This is matte. I also have found lately, I haven't liked gloss usually, but lately I found that gloss, I actually love how paint comes off of gloss and there's like cool techniques you can do with it. So I have started using gloss lately. So I'm just gonna put this on here. And probably since there's a lip here, normally I would just stick this down and cut it off, but and what I'm going to kind of do is set it down and then I'll pull it up and then you can kind of see where the paint is on it. So I'm just going to cut around the paint. I mean where the Mod Podge got it. So it's kind of giving me a guideline if that makes sense. Kind of an easy trick. That's already got the glue on it so then I just go back down. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we'll end up using putting paint and stuff on it too. And then these ones I can just kind of gauge. And again, not really sure why I did the whole strip thing. Oh well, that's okay. Probably would have been easier just to do one piece. Because then I could have just done it. And I'm not going to worry too much about this bottom piece. Because I don't even think it's going to be seen. So I'm going to put a coat on the top of this. And then I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to go in while that's drying. And I'm going to paint basically this top of it blue and the bottom of this green. I'm just going to use basic craft paint and it works the best because it's thick and it's opaque so it's going to really cover that up. So I'm going to mix myself a light blue and a green the same color. I'm going to paint that. I'm just going to use like a one inch um, flat wash brush. These are from Simply Simmons and I'm just going to paint the inside of that. So I'm going to do that really quick off camera because um, I don't want this video to be super long and that's not super important. So I will do that and be right back. Okay, I got it painted, and let me just say that it was a freaking pain in the butt. It actually was, I'll tell you why, but first I just put a coat of gesso on it, and I just had clear gesso on my table, so that's what I used, just to give it some grit for the paint to hold on to, which worked perfectly, <clears throat> and then I painted it, and it worked perfectly, and then I got some green too high than I wanted it, and I went in, and I made, I was so careful not to get any on this little plastic part in here, this thing, right, or glass, I guess it is, in there, and... Then I went in to go wipe down the green and I got my brush in there too far and I got it all over this thing. So I've been spending the last five minutes trying to clean this off and you can tell it's not very clean. And I thought, screw it, I know that I can get the paint off after it's all dry and done and I'd rather like wait for this to dry. Um, now you can actually take these out. There's like these little things that you can unscrew and take out which might be the better option to do but I was too lazy to do it. So I'm not going to worry about it. Um, and really just just rub it up a little bit and it'll be fine. I might have to go get some window cleaner though now thinking about it because before I put anything inside of it I'm gonna want to, right? Oh so annoying. Alright, I gotta go get window cleaner. I'll be right back. Alright, grab some window cleaner. I just found it out here in my art studio. I hope it works. You can see this is like all tilted. I'm just gonna well, I can't really decide. It's foaming, which I'm like, really, seriously. Maybe I'll just spray a little bit in the middle. Like, literally, little bits. And then, I thought it would be easiest, and we'll see if it works, just to take this foam brush and clean it. Because if I stick my whole hand down there again, I think I'll, because when I was trying to do it before, that's how I was getting the paint everywhere. So, we'll see. And I went, I made sure that I dried the sides. Hopefully enough. Oh, 
seem to work pretty good. It looks there's some on the outside. I'm not gonna clean the outside till the very end, but I don't know. I think it's great. If it's not, it is what it is. We'll break the glass out of it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but when I was trying to do something else, I got this whole side got totally ruined. So I stuck my stupid thing in there to paint it. Remember we, how we were going to see how it goes? Yeah, this is how it's going. All right, the other thing I did was um, I put this on the back just to see where the grass would lay, and the grass was clear up to here, and I didn't like it that far up. So I actually did add more blue to that piece right here. So we have our backdrop, and I think the only thing that I'm going to do to it, because I don't want it to be like super messy, because if I do, then everything else is just going to be, like it just takes away from everything else sometimes. Um, I do think it would be cute to have a little bit of rub-ons and stamps in there, but I do, I want to put paint on it. Um, and I want it to be really light, not as dark as this blue that's in here. So I'm just taking a little bit of white paint, and I'm going to mix, seriously, just a smidge of blue with it like a smidge because I want to keep that light I, I actually like this so I'm just mixing it here off to the side and then I'm just gonna lightly kind of I'm gonna use my paintbrush because I've got so much stuff on my fingers I'm just gonna kind of paint the edges out because we don't want them to be super harsh And then I'm just going to try and dry brush it. And in my, when I mean dry brush, this brush is very dry. It's not wet. So. And that just adds a teeny bit of paint to it. You see that? Hopefully you can see it. And then I've got some green here already mixed. And I'm just going to do the same with the grass. Just kind of go over. I want to keep the pattern there. So I don't want to completely cover it. But, so, see what I'm doing? All right, now let's add the modeling paste to the inside of this. Um, and that will help us, because we need to know how high the modeling paste is going to go before we start adding other pieces to this thing. Can you see how cute this is going to be? I can already see it. Like, cute. And maybe we do want the green higher. We'll see. Um, uh, let's do modeling paste. So, I'm just going to take some modeling paste. And you can tell, no, no, no yelling, please. I've been... I've been yelled at before in videos on YouTube, people that obviously don't know me. You've contaminated that paste or whatever it is with another color. Do you have no regard to your art supplies? Yes, I do. I love my art supplies, but sometimes I get in a hurry and stick something that already has paint in there. There you go. It's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I'm just mixing a little bit of modeling paste and I'll zoom out so you can see off to the side here. And this isn't quite the green that I want. I want a little bit more of a blue green. So I think I'm actually going to add some turquoise into it because I don't have the color that I want. A little better. I think it could have some white in it too. It's a little dark. I could add more paste into it, but I don't think I'm going to need more paste in this. Well, you never know. We better take some just in case. I hate to have to remix it back up. Especially if we're doing a custom color over here. So I still want it a little more blue-green. I don't want it turquoise, but I keep forgetting this doesn't work. Alright, so wasting time here. Mixing up paint. Okay, this is more of what the color that I wanted. So I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna apply it to the bottom of this clock. And it is relatively thick. And if you wanted to build up the, the base of it first, um, you could, like we could stick tissue paper in here to build up the bottom of it a little bit. Um, I don't think I'm going to, but I am going to put more in the top because I kind of want to, like, even this out a little bit. 
so and I should, probably should look I don't want my grass to come and clear up the sides if I don't do this right I'm gonna be annoyed with myself so I'm just gonna take it and bring it down just a little bit there we go okay so I'm just building up the middle where I want to put the tree and we can always add more later too it's not exactly where I want. I kind of want to put the tree on the side though, over here. So let's build up this side a little bit. Now I am using way more paste than I thought I would. Just because I want to build this base up so you can actually see the grass through the glass. Does that make sense? And you still can't see it very well. So. Time to add more. So this, in this case, what I probably should have done is just taken like plain tissue paper. And what I mean by tissue paper is, you know, tissue paper that you wrap presents in. Let's see if I even have any. Well, it doesn't even matter. You could even use tissue paper like this and just kind of build yourself a little bit. So I'm gonna actually just stick it underneath all of this. See how that just instantly gives us some lift in there? And now I'm gonna zoom back in. Just gives us some base. I mean, you could use foam, you could use whatever you want, but this to me I know works, so. But it probably would have been good to use white or green. But it will get covered really fast. Just kind of mix it into the paste. This is something that you wanna do before you stick it in here, by the way. Not something that you want to do after it's in here, but hey, this is how we roll, right? Now let's put that in there and I'm getting stuff all over and see how it's starting to build it up a little bit. Now, of course, I'm going to want to cover that totally. Um, and that's why white would just be better. I can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm gonna push this to the front just to give it a little more. Oh, then I can add more tissue paper if I want to. Let's see. I'm gonna seriously have to wash this whole thing when I'm done. So that's building up. See how it's getting better? Let's stick a little more tissue paper in there. And I'm just going to put it in there and then cover the top of it with modeling paste instead of trying to dig that back out. So, I'm going to fill this up because we don't want this video to be super long. Um, I'm going to fill this up with a little more tissue paper and then I'm just going to go over the top with modeling paste just like I did. So I'm going to do that and come back um, and then we will move on to something more fun than modeling paste. Okay, I am back. And before I go move on to anything, I want to talk about this clock. <laughs> So I started thinking, God, it would have just been easier to take the glass out first because it got so messy and blah, blah, blah. And then I realized you can't really because you're gonna paint over all this stuff and put paste over this. So there'd be no way to put the glass back in. So you just have to be really careful. Like after, um, so I put another, I put the tissue paper down and then I put another coat of modeling paste on the top. I'm not worrying about the back because you're not going to see it. And you also have to make sure to not get anything here. If you did, I did, and I just scraped it off because you also need this to close because this fits, you know, right inside of there. So, um, but once I had it all done and t it was dry, completely dry, I went in with just Windex cleaner and cleaned the glass off on the inside. I'm not going to worry about the outside. I've got stuff all over it. I'll worry about it when I'm done because I'm sure it's going to get just as messy. But I did clean the inside so it's ready to go. So that is kind of a tip. I would just say paint your stuff, get your modeling paste on there. Don't worry about what's on the inside. If you get stuff in it after it's all completely dry and done, then go in and clean it so you're not cleaning it multiple times. So this is the back and um, or the background. And what I've done now is cut, I've taken these little, those little paper hearts that I showed you at the beginning um, or their cardboard hearts. And then I just cut out from paper, from that same paper pad that Lucky Charm paper pad, um, four different heart shapes, and I pasted them onto this with just modeling, or sorry, decoupage, 
and I'm just using matte. And I want to put a coat over the top of it too um, because I am going to be shading it a little bit and so I want, I need some, I need it to be a non-porous surface. So putting the matte or the decoupage over the top is going to create that. So I'll let that dry, but then you then you go take a hole punch or whatever you want. You can, whatever you want to punch it and punch holes in it because we're going to string it with um, our floss or embroidery thread across here. And I'm not so sure I love that color. I might want to change it. What else do I got? I think, I don't know. I'm going to think about that for a minute. So, but I do want to add a teeny bit of texture to the background. So I got my, these stamps out. These actually are on sale too. That's why I'm showing them to you. Um, and this I thought would be cute. These actually, if you wanted to do like a cute cloud in the background, would be adorable. Those butterfly stamps would be adorable too. But I love this um, Yours Truly one. I love both the Hello Friend and Yours Truly one because these ones are like, even though they're like washi tape kind of stamps, they are perfect background stamps. Um, and I don't want like a heavy background, so, um, or you know, texture to the background. So I'm going to take a blue. This is the Aquamarine Ranger Archival Ink in Blue. And I'm just going to use it to create some texture. Um, and I don't want any harsh edges, so I'm going to kind of just dot in the middle a little bit and just kind of put some texture here and there. And can you see how that just adds a little bit of texture to the background, not very much in it in that kind of pattern? I think that this would be cute too. But I don't want any of that kind of squarey look. So let's see. Um, and then you can also come down here in the bottom, and this is just a green. Um, it's probably not the right green, but I don't know where my other one is. And I thought that this would be cute, just kind of along here at the bottom. can't see it very well, but do you see how it just kind of adds texture to it? Might, that might be, need to be a little dark. But I thought the green actually would be cute. Let's see. There's a cactus green. Let's see if this one shows up a little bit better. Yeah. So it kind of looks like little rolling hills in the background. Um, and like I said, if you wanted to do this, you could make a cute little cloud coming off the top up here. Probably shouldn't have done it in green. Didn't even think about it. But that's okay. It's fine. Um, or you could do something cute like yellow, like you could have done, this could have been done in yellow easily. Maybe we'll try and go back over it in yellow, kind of represent a sun a little bit. Oh, that is definitely on the wrong thing, isn't it? That's monarch orange and that's chrome yellow. Alright, well now we're just making a mess. And it's permanent so we can't get rid of it, so it's okay. We'll just leave it. But... Well, let me put these back because if I don't, then it will just end up with a huge mess on my table. Alright, get that out of the way. Alright, these have had a chance to dry. So now what I'm going to do is, before we put them on here, I want to add the letters to them. Um, and so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to use the word love. And like I said, I'm using these little stickers. Now, I purposely, um, I purposely didn't use um, any pattern paper that had white in the background. Um, I tried to stick with, I mean, they're not solids, but, you know, they're kind of tone on tones except for this one. Because you want the white sticker to stand out. So think about that when you're kind of doing things that if it's a totally white background your sticker's not gonna stand out very well. So get these on. And that one's really crooked and I don't know if you know me very well but I don't like crooked stuff which is weird but I just don't. Okay. So now we have these on here and we want to make those pop off just a little bit more. So I'm going to take my Faber-Castell pens and I'm going to zoom in for this a little bit closer. And these are the pit pens, big brush pens, they're just a big brush. Um, 
they are an Indian ink and they are permanent after you basically get them where you want them and they dry they are completely permanent um, I love them I use them for shading they're really great for shading um, you have to be it has to be on I mean you can color with them too but to shade with them meaning like if see if I put this down right here I can hardly I mean I can move it a teeny bit but I still have that harsh line if I use it on a on a surface that's already been decoupaged which is this and I'll just use green if I put it down here say on the bottom which we're gonna shade this anyways the grass see how I can just blend it so nicely and this um, this isn't this is paper has a sheen to it if this was just regular craft paper this doesn't see how that it doesn't move at all like I mean it's, once it's down it's down so putting the decoupage on it gives it that kind of surface that you can um, shade with and I'm gonna just I don't really need the turquoise but I'm just adding it and I like to shade color on color that's kind of what shading is some people like to shade all in brown because it kind of gives them that vintage look and I don't really I'm not into the vintage look but if you are then certainly do that so I'm just taking the color and it's got to be a color dark than that obviously that's not dark enough so my next step with the yellow would probably be to go to brown because I don't have another yellow that's that dark so I'm just gonna take a teeny bit of see I'm just barely dotting it on there because my fingers are going to get in the way, so I'm actually going to use a paintbrush and I'm just going to spread this out with my paintbrush a little bit. And I want it to blend, so if you add just a teeny bit of water, it'll blend a little better. But see how that kind of just shades behind it and makes it pop a little bit? So we'll do the same on here. And that's not going to be dark enough. I got a darker one and you want to kind of get close to it because you're shading behind it just to make it pop a little bit that one's not dark enough either we're gonna go way dark there we go and I don't want those harsh lines and normally I tend to use my fingers when I shade but obviously this is so little my finger if I went like this it would just do the whole thing so there wouldn't be a point to it And I don't want that much ink on it, so I'm only putting little pieces down and then spreading it out. I mean, a lot of times when I shade other things, um, you know, I'll just draw a line. So this one, because it's all different colors, I'm just going to go ahead and use brown. Um, and I, the brown I just dot on because it really is dark and I don't love it dark. But... It'll give me that nice little pop of shading that I want. So now we've got these all kind of shaded. And if we wanted to, we could come in here. Also with our doodle pen, I'm going to use my Scarlet Lime doodle pen. This goes through anything, over anything. Totally waterproof. And that one is, must be the one I keep putting back. That's, I don't know, there's one of them that's like a lame duck. So I'm just kind of like sketching. I'm not drawing any harsh lines. I'm just kind of drawing a line around the outside just to define it even more. I don't want like a, I don't want it to look like a box. I kind of want it to look like, like sketch marks. And that's the look I'm going for. You could even do it a little bit on the sticker if you want. And you can go around the outside of the heart. If you do it around the outside of the heart where it's so small, I would do a super light hand. And I wouldn't do all of it because you're going to already have so much going on from the shading and the other stuff. Like, if I get it on there, I get it on there. If I didn't, you can see it's not on there all the way on all of them. It just kind of gives it a little bit of thing. And I'm going to actually take my doodle pen and kind of put a line down here. Just some doodling in, just where the grass is. Just kind of give it a kind of grass look. 
So now we're gonna put this on and I know that my, when I go to put this on there, I know that I'm gonna put my tree on this side. I've already kind of figured that out. So I wanna make sure that this comes up here because I want it to be seen and I want it taller than the tree. So then I'm gonna just take my, and this to me is just the wrong color of pink and I know that's stupid being picky, but like it so let's just use this all right so I'm gonna basically thread this on And then once I get it threaded on, I am going to, and that should really seriously be faster than this, but oh yeah, make sure you come up the same way every time. So I come from the behind and go back. This embroidery thread is kind of giving me crap. Okay. And I probably should decoupage those stickers down. They don't seem to be staying that well. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue to that and I'll fix the other ones um, so I'm just going to string this and make it look nice and actually bread would have probably been cute okay so now I've got it on here as you can see probably I'm too close now I need to back up a little bit See how cute that's going to be? And then I'm just going to take washi tape. Because I don't really care what the back looks like. If I want, if I care, I'll paint it later. But I'm just going to paint it back here. You can see I already had some back there because I was trying it out. And then put this one on. Just kind of put it where you want it. That's cute. Now we're going to go in and actually I kind of want to bring that love down just a little bit. Got that embroidery thread. Might have been cuter just to use like jute. Now we're just going to take this and my modeling paste is still kind of wet. So I'm just going to kind of place it in here. And the modeling paste, oh wait, I'm not going to do that yet. This is what I thought would be cute. I thought this would be cute a different color. And so with these bottle brush trees, you could totally spray them and make them different colors. So I'm going to put this behind me. I'm going to start with light. This is kind of a peachy peach. Probably not quite the color that I want, so let's try. And I'm using the Mr. Huey sprays, which at the moment don't seem to be working very well. So. These poor sprays have sat forever and ever and ever. There we go. This is the boss lady. But I'm using these because all of these are on sale too. Now I kind of want the base. Well, it doesn't matter. The base can be whatever color. Let's make sure that that looks cute with it. Maybe a little more red. Oh goodness. And you could have easily done like a cute uh, var var variegated or what's it called? No, ombre. That would have been cute too. And I'm just going to wrap this up. I just use this because I don't want it to go all over my 
surface. Adorable. Um, I thought it would also be cute if you took some little beads. And I was planning on this being a little bit more pink. But still, the beads would be cute. I'm just putting beads kind of in it. So what I'm going to do is just kind of dab some and then sprinkle some beads in there. Glitter might work better. I didn't even get any on that. Did you see that? That was nice. We don't need it around the whole thing, but we kind of at least want it around the sides so it looks like it's everywhere. Okay, so I don't even think we need to let that dry. I think they're sticky enough. We'll just stick that right. Oops. Maybe it's not sticky enough yet. Right in there, and I'm just going to press it in. And when that modeling paste dries all the way, it's going to totally hold. But look how cute that little red tree is. Adorable. And then all we have to do is put this in to finish it off. And again, I kind of want to move this down a little bit. So we're just going to hold that right there. Stick it in. And voila! Look how cute that is. See how um, I should have gauged that. I'm really actually not in love with that little thing there, so. Well, here's the thing. Totally. There we go. I need to put it in straight and then it will work. Sorry, I'm having troubles with this dude. There we go, that's straight. So then it's in there and then that's your cute little project. And I think it's adorable. You could add other stuff if you want. I'm gonna get rid of that, that, um, what do you call that thing, a cloud? Cause I'm not in love with it. Um, I might actually sprinkle some glitter inside of the whole thing too, which the glitter is on sale. Can you tell I'm trying to, oh. Goodness gracious. I'm trying to get rid of stuff so we can bring in new stuff. So this stuff's going to be 40% off too. So I'm going to open that back up and just kind of sprinkle glitter everywhere. So it's like a glitter. <sighs> Don't really want it on that part of it. And there you go. That's cute. I love it. Turned out adorable. I will get rid of the cloud because it's seriously bugging me. You could add other little things in here too. Like if you wanted to. Um, I even thought actually some of those hearts. Like just laying on the ground over here. You know like kind of hearts are falling down from the sky by the tree. Or you could also put another word in there. Like, love how we're going to use those little alphabets. Um, oh, I don't know where they went. Those wood words, that would be cute. Do love and then always. Maybe across the front of the tree. The tree would be cute with a little bow on it, too. So I think I might add a bow. But this video is getting super long. So that is my project. And if you wanted to, you could totally paint the whole outside of this clock. And I think I will. I think I'm going to spray paint it, though. And I think I might spray paint it just white to brighten it up a little bit. And it'll make it go with a theme and maybe glitter. I don't know if I'll glitter it, but I'm going to definitely spray paint the outside of it white. Just easier than painting it. And plus, it will look nice. i got to clean up all this goop off of it. Okay, sorry I lied. I'm not quite done. Um, I felt like it needed a little more. I also wanted to show you. So I did fix this up here. I painted out just 
a light wash of paint you can still kind of faintly see the stamp on it but I just really didn't like it I also changed it out to white thread because I didn't like the pink and I made these little teeny bows and just glued them right there because I thought it looked cuter I also thought it would be cute to add another word so either you or always um, so what I did is I just took one of these words which is the Maya, the Maya Road words Maya Road, Maya Road I really have no idea how to say that um, and then I painted it pink, and then I just took this stamp, which was from that Yours Truly, and it's got this cool um, texture on it, and I just stamped over it, and that gave it the really cute, can you see that, um, chevron te texture. So you can use these, I mean, for texture. You don't necessarily have to use these as a cloud, because I'd probably never use it as a cloud, but I would totally, that is like the coolest texture, and because these are rubber, it's a really nice kind of stamp. So you get that cool texture. And then I just went in and I took my doodle pen. And I'll show you because I already stuck one in there. And that's why I'm showing you this one. But I just kind of went around the words or each letter with my pen. Just really sketchy like. Really loose. And I'm not going to use the word always because I think it's going to be too big. So I've already got the other one in there actually. But see how it just kind of defines it a little bit more? And that was kind of sloppy. But I put the U in there already. I put it there in front of the tree. And as you can see, I spray painted my um, clock. And what I did for the top of the clock, just so that you guys are aware. And hello, get in there. Um... Let's make sure this is straight. Is all I did was um, I took a piece of paper that was this size. I mean, I traced it and I set it down. And then I actually, this is going to sound really weird, but because I couldn't tape it down because I needed to get this edge right here, I took modeling paste um, and I put it all around just the outside of um, the paper around here and stuck the paper straight down. So the paper was actually, this is the paper, straight down on here. And I didn't try and make it perfect because I knew no matter what, even if I got paint on the glass, it would still form a circle. Um, so there was modeling paste just around the outside of this. I did that because I knew I could pull it off because modeling paste wouldn't dry that fast. And modeling paste is really easy to remove from glass. You just use glass cleaner. So I thought that was the best idea. If I would have put double-sided sticky tape or any other kind of glue, that kind of glue is really hard to get rid of. So I just thought this was a lot better and it worked out perfectly. So there you have it. I think I need to move, I'm gonna mess with it a little bit. I wanna move that E up a little bit. But, oh, and I've gotta put that in there a little bit better. But I think putting that little, um, putting that little U in there just looks cute. Just stick it right there in the grass. It's way cute. And then this, I'm not like trying to get it down really hard because once I close it, that's why I'm using this, this squashy tape. Once I close it, um, it'll actually stay on there just fine. So I'm just kind of right now trying to hold, get it in there, keep it hold, held until I get this on. So tricky. It's like annoying, just to say the least. Now I'm just selling you guys on wanting to make one of these, huh? <laughs> there. And now I can take all the little things off the back and I can spray paint the back white too if I want it tall. And I just used a cream spray paint. It wasn't necessarily for metal. But that's, I love the U in there. I think that's so much cuter and the little, just the whole thing. So I feel so much better about it. I didn't love it before. Like it now. It could even stand to have a few more like little treats and treasures in there. But I'll have to do some searching because I don't have any treats and treasures here. So there you go. That's the final, final project. That's what it looks like done. Super cute, huh? So we'll see you back here next time.